Next, we are going to talk about overturns and underturns. A normal turn is usually 360 degrees. When we do an overturn, it means that some of our, one of us is going to turn more than that, but we are not going to do more steps so we don't consider it a double turn. And under turns means turning less. Now, the rule for the follower is always finish the turn facing your partner if he doesn't stop you otherwise. So if I lead her into a turn, she's always going to finish this turn facing me. And in this case, she did a 360 normal turn, a natural turn as we call it. But if while she does the turn, I change my place, she is forced to turn 90 degrees more because from here, I actually end up here. So as she does the turn, she notices that I changed the place. How did I do that? Well, I did a crossing backwards. You can also cross in front. This will allow you to travel more. So one more time, one, two, three, four. She doesn't know yet that she's going to have to turn more. Five, six, now she adjusts. She can also adjust with 180 degrees. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But we have the same amount of steps. Four steps for her to turn, four steps for me, and make sure that you end up tapping with the right foot. The under turns on the other way means that she's going to have to turn less. So if she does a usually a 360 degree turn and she ends up seeing me here, she's going to have to turn 90 degrees less. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I changed my place here. Let me do it from this direction. One, two, three, four. I go a little to the left, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, when we do the changing of places, this one, you can call this to be an under turn because she does a turn, but instead of 360 degrees, she just has to turn 180 because I'm waiting her already on the other side. So from here, she just has to finish the turn the other way. So actually the changing of places could be called an underturn. Moving on next, we have the Madrid step with all of its variations. Make sure that you check our footwork video because we have some more footworks there. The Madrid step is a footwork. Okay, so let's see the steps. First, we have to change our connection here or here which means we have more tension than in this connection, okay? This is for loose arms, hair brushes and turns. This connection, on the other hand, and this one is for a little more tension and we need that now. So the steps are as follows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more time, we go one, two, three, tap, five, six, seven, tap. And one more time to see my steps. We have one, two, three, tap, five, six, seven, and tap. We can also lead that, as I said, in this position. It can be done with this connection, but this is more advanced and your partner has to be very, very aware of your intentions. Now, usually we call the Madrid step, whatever starts like this. No matter how it will end, we call it generically a Madrid step. On count one, two, three, four, she will engage her hips. That is if you allow her to do that. To allow her to engage, her hips, I have to allow her to get a little lower to bend her knees and do a figure eight with her hips on count one, two, three, four. I also enhance this movement by twisting my feet. Okay, so let's see how that goes. One, two, three, four. We arrive 
face to face. From here, we have multiple ways of exiting this figure. One of them is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we ended it with a body roll for the follower. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can also add, for example, something for myself. Let's say I do a reverse step. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the hairbrush. And then we exit from this figure. So if you know what a reverse step is and the Madrid, then it's going to be pretty easy to understand more difficult combinations. Or if she understand how we lead a body roll, she's going to be able to follow it no matter where we place it into our dancing. So as I previously mentioned, you can use a head roll, which is a roll from the head, but engaging a little the shoulder line, or a body roll, which is a more extensive move, engaging more of the upper part. So the body roll is like a very big head roll. So let's see how that goes with the head roll. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The head roll is a small body movement. So this allows us to still have five, six, seven, eight. So we have all four counts, but the body roll is a bigger movement, which takes more time. So after one, two, three, four, we have just two steps to allow her to do a more engaging movement. So let's see how that goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And as you could see, we have just two steps on five, six, seven, eight. So one more time, we go one, two, three, prepare, five, six, seven, and just tap on eight. So I did just two steps to allow her to finish a more involving and extensive movement. We can also have, let's say, the drop move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or let's continue with some more footwork. I'm going to turn her here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are multiple ways for you to combine this figure. Make sure that you practice it because you are going to see it a lot in our upcoming figures. The Bachata Mastery full course is on track to be launched soon and it contains fully detailed classes ranging from beginners all the way up to advanced levels. Now let's get back to our video. Let's continue with the hand throwing. Now, whenever we don't need a hand, we just throw it away. Okay, so how do we throw the hands? First, when you throw the hand, make sure that you give a very clear direction. So I can throw the hand upwards or I can throw it sideways or I can throw it to the back and reconnect it. So this is a very easy way for you to change the hand connection. So instead of putting the hand backwards by using, let's say, a turn, so this hand now is in hammer lock. I can just throw the hand backwards. One, two, three, four. Whenever I throw the hands, I try to engage into fluid movements, which are usually their circular movements. So I don't just do this straight away. I try to come from a circular movement and then push it. Now, whenever you try to work with the hands up, down, throw them around. There are two things that you need to differentiate. First is pushing the hand into one position is one thing and giving an impulse is something different. For instance, if I want to make her get with the hands up, I can either lead them upwards but I also end up with my hands upwards. So I can do this if I want to, let's say, lead something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But in the same time, I can give an impulse 
which will still get her hands up, but my hands will remain down. Let's say I want to do this one, two, three, four, stop and connect. So we have to differentiate between leading the whole movement or throwing the hand. One common mistake here is if we want to throw the hand upwards, usually let it go down. So make sure you give the impulse upwards if you need it up. You can also intercept the hand. So give the impulse upwards, intercept, and then go back. So let's give an example with counts. One, two, three, four, connect. Five, six, seven, eight, exit. So throwing the hands is very important because it allows you to do various combinations. Uh, another way of throwing the hands is, let's say I'm throwing them somehow different, five, six, seven, eight, and now I'm using my arm or a part of my elbow, which comes from below and up, and I have five, six, seven, eight. On five, six, seven, eight, I can do a preparation and then throw the hands again. So let's see how that looks. I'm going to do basic step, normal turn for the follower, delay turn for myself, change the hand. Another normal turn for her, delay turn for me. And here we are going to use the hand throw. So with my right, I do one, two, three, prepare another throw, five, six, seven, eight, turn and then reconnect. So throwing the hand is a very, very used method of changing the hand connection throughout the figures. A few very useful exercises for you regarding the hand throwing can be something like this. So let's say I throw one hand, connect the right, connect the left. Now I throw the hand that is below, connect it upwards, throw the hand that is below, connect the upwards. Now try to get some speed. First, you are going to do it one hand at a time. Throw, connect, then throw, connect, then you are going to do them continuously. Another good exercise is to change your mind. So let's say I throw this hand, I change my mind and take it back. Get it back. Or change your mind and put it in another position. Okay? Or you can throw both hands, change your mind into a wave. So there are very, uh, so there are a lot of variations that you can use with this exercise. You can also do it in shadow position. So from here, I can use this to connect. 